All right, hello, my name is Ian Lusick. Today I will be presenting my research paper that I wrote for my criminal, Intro to Criminal Justice CRJ 105 class for Dr. Kelly Stout. So I again wrote my paper, my research paper on excessive force specifically in the racially minority divided communities. So these are those inner city communities, big cities that have a large population and a lot of those populations being minority. Excuse me, I need to go and hit my computer slide go to a pointer or anything fancy like that. So what is excessive force? So Cornell University defines excessive force as force in excess of what a police officer deems to be reasonably necessary. So this means that it's completely up to the officer. There's no supervisor there every second telling an officer what he can and can't do and what force is necessary. So whether that be using hands to then maybe using a taser, then OC spray, and then maybe even lethal force at that point. So what this, like again, what this really means is that in every given situation, no matter the heightened senses, the adrenaline, all that craziness, um, all set aside, the officer needs to be able to reasonably decide how much force is necessary to control the situation or end a deadly threat. So a little bit of background. Like I was saying, it's, it's really the officer that is the one determining in the instance with those heightened senses and heightened uh, emotions what is the right amount of force. So, I mean, ever since the inception of the term or the whatever police force, the group of people that got together and it became the first police force, um, there's always been instances of excessive force. It's been reported. Um, this is like going back hundreds of years. Cops, unfortunately, a lot of them get their badge and have become very power thirsty and think that they can do whatever they want and get away with it which is definitely not the case. So um, this is always gonna be a problem, it has always been a problem, but I decided to research how, and maybe brainstorm my own ideas on how to combat this problem. So the first um, hypothesis, I guess, I used uh, two hypotheses to, dis to determine why um, racially driven use of excessive force by the police is an issue. First one is the minority threat hypothesis, which in my research paper I talk about a lot of it being supported by many universities and their research, and also not just universities, but other scholars uh, doing independent research. They all use this term minority threat hypothesis. So to me, what I got, took away from this, what I understood is that this means um, that the amount of minorities living in a community, so say if you have mostly all white people, that the way that the officers patrol and the way that they make arrests and how they view their job basically for that area is based off of the amount of minorities living compared to those white people. So basically what it says is if you're in an all white community and you have just a small amount of uh, racial minorities that those people are going to be arrested at extremely high rates because there's only a small number of those minorities anyway. So. Um, Basically what this is saying is that if you're in an all white area and you're a minority, you're more likely to have an interaction with law enforcement. Now this could go one of two ways. And the kind of my next hypothesis that I have in here explains how the other way that um, this could go. But I just think that the fact that all the people that I did, that I looked up their research all talk about this minority threat hypothesis and racially driven excessive force by the police. Um, I think that that carries a lot of weight. And that, that means that this is most likely a big driving factor um, in those large communities, again, like those large all white communities. So for my second hypothesis, um, is that a lot of the issue, a lot of the, ex the use of excessive force has to do with the suspect interactions with law enforcement. So in my, actually in an earlier uh, presentation we had this semester, we, my group was presenting on this same issue and I came up with this and I thought that this was also very good and apply to this situation as well. Um, cops, when you're in a heightened situation, again, those emotions, you pull someone over, say something simple like pulling someone over like a traffic stop, you don't know what's gonna happen when you walk up to that car door. When you walk up to that car door, that person could pull a gun out of their pocket real quick and put it right in your face and you have no time to react and you're dead. So that is not good. So um, the ways that cops, I would say, like, I mean, I've, I've had interactions with the cops, not necessarily done anything illegal, 
but I've never been doing anything wrong in the instance where the cops had to use any kind of force on me. So if you put yourself in that situation, there, there's a better chance that you're gonna get shot or you're gonna get tased if you're acting like an idiot um, with these cops. So unfortunately, racial minorities get a really bad rap and have a really bad, um, I guess, feeling towards law enforcement, and that leads to big issues. So then that, that means that as soon as a cop is walking up to your window and sees a black man, or a Mexican man or something like that, their senses are even more heightened and they're gonna be even more apt to use excessive force just because of basically history and what's been going on with policing in, in 2020. I mean, it's crazy that what this world has come to and how people act nowadays, but unfortunately that's how it is and we have to conform to it. So why is it an issue? Um, it's an issue, I guess, or I guess what is making it an issue, it's tearing up, it's tearing the relationship between law enforcement and the community apart, which people have been trying, or a lot of police departments have been trying effortlessly to get this relationship back over the last few years when there's been all these crazy, crazy racially driven uh, riots and stuff going on. So um, what I think is that there's a lack of education by both, for both the public and law enforcement. Law enforcement can't be acting out in these ridiculous ways, um, whether it's racially driven or not, that makes it even worse obviously, um, but if, if there was a better education and these people spent more time in like psychology classes and the kind of classes that our, our, our law enforcement degree or criminal justice track puts you and wants you to take, I think those would set you up better to know how to handle these situations better. The public needs to realize that they cannot just come running up to a cop with their hands in their pockets like they're gonna have, like they have a gun in their pocket. This is what's causing all these issues or you can't, you can't run from the cops and then try to hit someone with a baseball bat. And like these are the things that people do and think they're going to get away with. And then there's this huge uprising and, and riots after people get shot. Well, I mean, you mess with the bull, you get the horns is kind of the saying, right? I mean, eventually this shit's going to happen. So what kind of solutions are there? Again, like I said, I think the biggest solution is just going to come down to education. Um, and really, unfortunately, the other thing is just people being normal people, which we can't, ha we can't ask for that and expect that out of everybody. People act like crazed idiots every day. We see this on the news, we see this in our own life, we see this in school even. Um, this, this, is, this issue is never gonna get better, if, well, especially with the country so divided. If our country could come together and have some kind of common consensus, maybe one day we could solve this issue of excessive force and especially with minority communities. Here's my list of sources. Thank you.